and welcome to a special edition of the Week in Review for the week ending September 1st, 2012. I'm Vina Barath, inviting you to spend the next half hour with me as we celebrate 50 years of independence. The Ministry of Planning is on a drive to stimulate a sense of patriotism and civic responsibility among citizens on the occasion of Trinidad and Tobago achieving 50 years as an independent state. Fifty years from now, I would really like to see Trinidad as a country, Trinidad and Tobago as a country, and the two islands, and we have five other islands outside. I'd like to see us as a country in which, first of all, there is no poverty. Because I believe that it is within our means, within our ability to do that. Secondly, I would like to see us as a country that is highly educated with a sophistication that accompanies that education so that we understand the importance of civility. We understand the importance of openness. We understand the importance of uh, valuing what is ours and bringing that to the table of nations in the world. And yet at the same time, understanding that within our society, there is need to have the kind of democracy and freedom and appreciation of diversity to make that kind of spirit possible. And at the same time, understanding that the world is a richer place from having diverse countries with great diversity, uh, bringing it to the table of the world, so bringing these things to the table of the world, so to speak. So I want to see us as a country that is high per capita income, very uh, excellent quality of life that you might, one might say is the envy of the rest of the world. We have all the requirements for it, the tropical climate, the natural endowments, the creativity of our people. Um, and I would really like to see us as a country in which uh, our people live a life of happiness and other people when they come here see this as a place of happiness that they always remember. I want to wish all citizens of Trinidad and Tobago a happy 50th anniversary um, birthday. Uh, we've had independence for 50 years and what we have achieved would not have been possible without the participation of all our people. And I want to ask, or I want to thank our people for what they've contributed and what they continue to contribute. This country is its people and the contributions of our people. And we need to remember that and we need to value that. But more than that, I want our people to be unified in purpose, in all their diversity, in all their f the fulfillment of their 1.3 million dreams as individuals under conditions of freedom and liberty, liberty and democracy. Unity of purpose is important. And if it is one wish I have for independence, for all our people in Trinidad and Tobago, is that wish for unity of purpose as we are headed into the 50, next 50 years of our life as an independent nation. Trinidad and Tobago stood proud on August 31st. The celebrations began with the Independence Day Parade.
persons arrived in the capital city and packed the grandstand and surrounding areas of the Queen's Park Savannah from as early as 6 a.m. to witness the historic event. The national colors, red, white, and black, were seen everywhere as all in attendance showed their patriotism by donning at least one of the colors. The parade included members of all the arms of the Defense Force and the Protective Services, such as the Army, Coast Guard, Air Guard, Police, Fire and Prison Services. Also taking part were the Cadet Force, the Red Cross and the St. John's Ambulance Corps. Several CARICOM leaders were specially invited to the proceedings to sit alongside Prime Minister the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa. Seated with her in the VIP area of the Grand Stand was Jamaican Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller and St. Vincent Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez. President His Excellency Professor George Maxwell Richards arrived at 8 a.m. on the dot and the formalities of the parade then began. President Richards, being the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, was then invited to inspect the troops. Following this, the spectators were treated to a thrilling display by the members of the Air Guard as their helicopters flew past the parade and even accompanied the troops on their march off the parade square. The most amount of excitement and applause was reserved, though, for the Defence Force Rhythm Team, who treated the crowd to an entertaining display which no words can do justice to explain. Performance purposes. As you call it, pokey drill. Oh, that's what you call pokey drill. We used to call this pokey drill, uh, or, or parts of it. The show ended with a 21-gun salute and the marching bands playing Happy Birthday to You, which the crowd changed the lyrics off to reflect TNT's 50th birthday as an independent nation. So we want to have a lovely country forever, yeah. Fifty years from now, I would like to see a well-diversified economy, one that is globally competitive, and one with a very healthy and robust financial system. I think there are a number of important steps that we must take if we want to realize such a an ambitious vision. Of course, the first is actually the vision in itself and understanding what that requires, which I, the most important one, I believe, would be a champion. I think we need champions who would deal with issues such as addressing some of the bureaucracy, having a very close air of the political directorate. These are the people who actually will make things happen and we've typically faltered in terms of not having enough champions to execute on the strategies. We're very good at visioning and we're very good at writing out strategies, but we're very poor on execution. I think having the champions are what would make that critical distinction. If we look at our history, we've had various what I would call tipping points in our economic and business cycles. And my general feeling is that we're pretty much close to another tipping point where we're coming to the realization that we cannot sustain ourselves um, through the oil and gas resources and that something definitive must be done. And I get the impression that we're working towards making that particular transition and that's why I consider that that will be a key tipping point for us. Therefore, I don't see it as negative. All I see it as a point of inflection to another part, economic part, for Trinidad and Tobago. As we are about to celebrate our golden jubilee, I would like to wish all citizens of Trinidad and Tobago a very happy and reflective 
50th anniversary. And the expectation is that 50 years from now, we would certainly be uh, an economy that has joined the ranks of the most prosperous within the global community. Say we want just not a place and not better. Come for all the day. Say we want to have a lovely country forever. Say we want just not a place and not better. Come for all the day. Say we want to have a lovely country forever. Yeah. Fifty years from now, I'd like to see Trinidad and Tobago with a people that are less dependent on government, you know, for a lot of their needs. I'd like to see a people, therefore, that are more self-sufficient. I'd like to see government that um, really uh, rules for the people. I'd like to see a uh, Trinbago that um, we where we consider ourselves Trinidad and Tobago citizens and not Afro-Trinidadian or Indo-Trinidadian or Chinese Trinidadian or whatever else. You know, we want to name ourselves, but a people who really take pride in the fact that this is where we come from yes our heritage may have been from diverse places but as at this point in time we belong here and it is only as we appreciate that we belong here that we will really begin to feel differently and develop and you know grow what we have and really appreciate what we have i don't think we appreciate what we have you know, we got a gold medal and everybody is um, at a place where there is pride and nationalism and patriotism, but that must continue. That must be for all times. You know, my husband tells people, she's one of the few people I always hear singing in the national anthem. <laughs> and I do because I love it. You know, this is where I was born and this is where I will die. We need to do a number of things. Um, we need to look at how we govern. Um, we need to ensure that we allow our people to participate more. I spent 10 months in local government and that really was an eye-opener. I think local government is one of the really critical ministries of government and critical areas for a country's development. They've done it worldwide and we can take example but it's not that we have to copy, we are different so we customize. But through local government we should be able to participate in what is the governance of the country. We should have councillors and um, corporations that are really able to go out there and touch the people. As I told the CEOs and the chairman of the bodies, um, they touch the lives of our citizens every single day. If the garbage trucks don't go out there and pick up the garbage, people are in distress. You know, if they don't fix the roads, we have problems. Local government is really critical to a country's development, and I think we need to get the system right. We have legislation in place. Um, I think we have a minister who right now has been in the local government system and is looking at its development um, throughout. So uh, I think it, it has the potential for going forward, but whoever is leading local government needs to really see the potential and use it to develop the country. It's very possible, right? It's, it's, it's very difficult 
for government, central government, to impact each and every individual. But in the local government system, you can. At this 50th year of our anniversary, I think we have to be commended because we have come a long way. We still have far to go, but it has been recognized that we have done a lot as a small nation. I want to be able to advise our people, this is where we belong. We don't belong anywhere else. We are citizens of this proud nation of Trinidad and Tobago. And it is only as we do our part to make it the best that it can be, that it will be the best it can be. But we need the efforts of each and every one of us going forward into the future. It can't just be government. It can't just be private sector. It can't just be the energy sector. It is not just me, the one individual, doing my part to decide. It has to be all of us coming together to do what is required to push us forward. Say we want just not a place and look better. Come for all day. Say we want to have a lovely country forever. The Independence Day celebrations soared to higher heights with the President's Award Ceremony which took place at the Queen's Hall. It was an evening of patriotism as this country paid homage to a number of persons who made invaluable contributions to society. And while the country acknowledges the achievements of its youth, it also looks back to the legacy left by politicians. Mr. George Michael Chambers posthumously former Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the sphere of public service. Ms. Andrea Chambers, his daughter, will accept the award. Chambers served as Prime Minister from 1981 to 1986. He was appointed to the post by the late President Sir Ellis Clark after his predecessor, Dr. Eric Williams, died in office. The award of the order went to former Prime Minister George Chambers and former Labour leader Kola Renzi. Mr. Adrian Kola Renzi, posthumously former Labour leader in the sphere of Labour. Mr. Robert War, his son, will accept the award. He was first President General of the Oil Field Workers Trade Union, OWTU, and was involved in the establishment of three other trade unions. He was also the first president of the Trinidad and Tobago Trades Union Council from its foundation in 1938 until 1944. The Shaconia Gold for long and meritorious service tending to promote national welfare or strengthening community was awarded to a number of persons including Dr. Hamid Alfredo Ghani. And first up to receive the Hummingbird Medal for loyal and devoted service in any field of human endeavor or other human action to Trinidad and Tobago was awarded to Miss Joyce Habakan in the sphere of community service. <laughs> Apart from the award ceremony, a cultural show was also part of the spectacular event.
Say we want just not a place and look better. Come for all day. Say we want to have a lovely country forever. Yeah. I'm a very idealistic type of person. I would, would tell you that I'd want to see us even as an improved version of Singapore. And they're number one. As even better than that. That's the thing, it's not about one, two or twenty ways. It's, it's, if we just do one thing, if we just create an enabling environment, I have confidence in the people of this country that if given a chance, they can reach their full potential. If we just continue down the road, business as usual, with the same type of politics, and I say that I talk about both sides of the politics, I would think I think in your question you're asking me where we'd be in 50 years. I think we could be worse than Haiti and it won't take us as 50 years to get there. I think we'll do it a lot faster because the minute the oil and gas runs out, then what do you do? If we can't solve our problems with the money we have today, you think we're going to solve it with no money? Um, I made the comment upstairs, I said, you know, we need to leave oil and gas before oil and gas leaves us. And that's a fact. Well, you see, that's the thing. I wouldn't spend. You need to invest. We need to stop spending money in Trinidad and Tobago and start to invest money in Trinidad and Tobago. I think this place can be a fun, happy, productive kind of place and a very creative place. I think, if given a chance, I think those are things we can, in fact, do. We have flashes of it. We have pockets of it, and I don't see any reason if given the opportunity, the whole country cannot be like that. Sustainable uh, development is development that is predictable, it is intentional, and it is directional. Meaning, you are going at the space at which you can handle um, in the way in which you can handle it, and you know, in the direction that you want it to go. I mean, when we came through a boom, it was, we didn't want that kind of growth. It was tiring, projects got overcosted, you know, um, things got delayed. That's not the kind that we want. We want sustainable, predictable, and directional to, towards the goal that we need to be, given the resources that we have and what we will not have eventually. I'd like to say, well done to, the, to Trinidad and Tobago on 50 years of independence. I think we have come far, but I don't think we have come as far as we can. And I would like to put forward a challenge to the next generation for the next 50 years. Let us be one of the greatest countries in the world, as opposed to be one of those that could have always done better. That's a look at GISL's Week in Review. Here is a reminder that you can view segments of this program on our website at news.gov.tt. I'm Vina Bharat. Thanks for joining us and do have a great week. Say we want just not a place and look better. Come for all day. Say we want to have a lovely country forever. Yeah. Trinidad and Tobago, a very, very special place, a unique place. I would like to see us come into our own in the next 50 years, really be into our own. Already privilege of traveling the world and seeing different places. Um, places like Japan inspired me, where it is that they respect uh, their history and where they come from, but yet they also respect growth as well. And they've managed a way to make it hand in hand. I want to see that fortune at Adam Tobago. I want us to recognize that Yes, we are a developing nation, but we're also an island, and to respect the beauty of that as well, 
in the simplicity of that. But yet, let advances work for us rather than against us, you know? Um, I really want to see that in the next 50 years, some maturity with respect to how we move ourselves. How do we address, you know, moving forward? I mean, let's just say. I think first things first, we need to be real with ourselves. We need to be real with what we do, you know. We, we, we tend to take a pill for these symptoms, but don't look at the source and don't look to see why things are how they are, you know, the, the problems that we're faced, um, the environment, why we have all this flooding, why the crime situation. We need to study, we need to look at ourselves in the mirror and be real. Trinidadians need to be real with themselves, so Trinidad Unions. And, and uh, not put things under the rug. Let's, let's talk, let's, do, let's, let's be real about things. Um, I think too, as well, we need to, uh, you know, the kids, you know? It, it, we need to, to, to teach the next generation coming up. Um, and be, be honest with them, be up to the time. The kids learn so much, they're so much more uh, receptive to, to what's going on. More so than in, in, in my days and the days of our parents. They're so much more exposed. So we need to be very careful what examples we set, because they're looking. Um, if we want to secure our future, we have to secure the next generation and what they are being given. So I just want to wish Trinidad and Tobago, love and light, understanding for each other and understanding for our purpose. Um, this is a big year, 50 years, the Jubilee, Golden Jubilee, Trinidad and Tobago. We have a lot to be proud of. We have a lot to look forward to. You know, I want to say just cheers and blessings to the entire nation and all those who have the right intentions for us to move forward in a positive way. Blessings to the entire Trinidad and Tobago. I love, love you all, I love the energy that is Trinidad and Tobago. Say we want just not a place and look better. Come for all day. Say we want to love my country forever.